It's the hit selector. I am Crystal, and I would like to welcome my lovely guest on Celeb Select today, Angela Katatumba. Hi, Crystal. Hi, Angie. I am more than excited to be here today. Oh, it's so good to have you. And I'm even more excited to be here with you because mm. I've always been a big fan of yours. Oh, thank you. I always find you very beautiful. Oh, <laughs> okay. Don't do that. Do no, you? seriously. <laughs> and I listen to your voice almost actually every day. Really? In the car. Mm. That's so cool. That's so, so cool. So I'm, I'm, trust me, I'm the honored one to be here today. Well, thank you for joining us on the show. Thank you. We want to get to know you better. I mean, we've seen a lot of work that you do. You're very involved in charity work and you pop up every now and then. But we want to know your story even more. Okay. So maybe you can just start by telling us, you know, where you were born. Wow. Nairobi, Kenya. Okay. <laughs> uh -huh. Why was that? Exile. Mm -hmm. So... Some of us have understood the meaning of refugee. <laughs> 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 and that's why we welcome refugees in Uganda. Because mm -hmm. a lot of us were refugees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some years back during the Idi Amin time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, where did you go to school then? When did you come back to Uganda, I guess I should um, ask. How old were I you? I came, r I think the next year, mm -hmm. like right after. Mm -hmm. um, I was, we, we, I, I went to, for, for okay, Riverside Farm Nursery School and then uh, Kampala Kindergarten okay. with Mrs. Mulumba. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Mulumba. Oh, back in the day. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then from there, the Katatumba Academy. Mm -hmm. That's where I did all my primary. Mm -hmm. uh, with all my, you know. Were you spoiled going to daddy's school? <laughs> 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 Um, you know, uh -huh. you know, you, 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 honestly, I think you, 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 you tend to take things for granted mm. in life. Okay. But I truly believe we had it very easy. Okay. Um, then from there, mm -hmm. uh, we went to Canada mm -hmm. for high school. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then from there, um, Oxford Brooks University in England mm -hmm. for uni. I did my law degree, economics and a master's in HR mm -hmm. by 19. You were really young. I was. I've always How? been so. My, I've always been young. I've always been so ahead. So did you like start school really early as well? No. The reason I. Or they would just keep pushing you like a class ahead. No, and it's not even being clever or anything like that. The truth is, Ugandan system is on the British system, which is so much uh, more superior mm -hmm. to the Canadian system. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when I left Uganda here, I was just I just finished PLE. We were we just sat like S one like this, mm -hmm. and we started biology, chemistry, and all this stuff. Mm. So when we went to Canada, they, Canada, they put us in uh, the equivalent of our age, we're twelve, and they're like, okay. 12, 13, you belong in grade 9. Mm. And in grade 9, they're like, P.E., sewing, you know, funny <laughs> things. So I got my twin brother, Rujuru, and I'm like, you know what, you guys, let's go talk to the principal and see what, what's happening. Mm -hmm. So we go to the principal's office, and he's like, hi, oh my God, Ugandans, oh my God, the African kids, how are you? Is everything okay? <laughs> you know how they treat us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh -huh. So we're like, ah, oh, we're good. Um, he's like, so, so can I help you? And then we're like, but it's okay, we, we like our class, we, like, we love everything. Mm -hmm. But when do we start the chemistry, biology, physics? The guy looked at us like, what? He called his, uh, the, uh, his junior teacher and he said, these kids are geniuses. <laughs> Take them to grade 11 and 12. <laughs> are you serious? That is how. Cause wow. So he bumped us up like four grades. And then he put us in the seniors. And that's how ever since then university, we're only 15 turning 16. That's why I finished by 19. So that's why we've always been ahead. Do you feel like when you got older, like to university, that maybe it was a bit too much or you were used to just being responsible? Because and, I'm and sure that all the kids around you were doing all kinds of stuff. Honestly, actually, the change was like shocking because now we're back to the British system. Mm -hmm. And then now we're looking clowns because <laughs> the other system was a joke. <laughs> like the Canadian system straight up was a joke. Mm -hmm. okay. We got passed with honors and da da da. Mm. And then to get a scene, my dad had to make sure because we're too young, we're just 15. Mm -hmm. entering like Oxford Brooks University. Are you mm -hmm. kidding me? So my dad had to make sure we had, he had, you know, doctor's letters and lawyer's letters to prove we are competent and don't blame us and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know? Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so we started and then it was all about lectures and things got serious so fast, so quick. Mm. 
So that was another, like, it was, it was up, down, up, you know? So that was our education system. But it was interesting, and, and we, we caught up. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You always talk about your twin brother, as yeah. long as I've known you. I, I mean, know. he's always by your side. I you know. know. <laughs> and people always say that, you know, twins have this magical connection. You can almost read each other's minds. Is yeah. that true? I, I, I never believed so until... Now, when I moved to the States, because mm -hmm. after university, I moved to, chi to Chicago, because mm -hmm. my husband now, the guy married me in England, then we moved to Chicago, mm -hmm. it's another story. Mm -hmm. So now I was in Chicago, and I left Nigeria in England. Okay. Mm -hmm. Honestly, this is the first ever twin connection story I can tell you. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, was, I, I, I was sleeping, I woke up in the morning, but I dreamt that I was falling and falling off a cliff. Okay. Off mm -hmm. a mountain. And then I, I hurt my back so badly, and the pain was unbelievable. The pain was unbelievable. Okay. The, the, the most excruciating pain. And this was a dream? And a, real, a dream, just a dream. So I woke up, and I'm like, wow, that pain seemed so real. Mm -hmm. And then in the morning, my mom is calling. My dad is calling. I'm like, hi, how's Uganda? What's up? They're like, hey, you've not talked to your twin. He's here in Uganda. He came for holiday from England. But my dear, the whole of last night, we were at the hospital. He had a horrible backache. The pain was too much. And I'm like, I know the pain don't say much. I dreamt about it. No. So that's the only twin yeah. thing that has ever happened, I think. Yeah, but Apart the, from the you fact felt that close. it, you really felt it. Yeah. And that's a crazy coincidence. It can't just be. Yeah, that was too much. It was it was straight up telepathy right there. Okay, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> so you talk about your twin brother all the time. But what yeah. about your other sibling? Oh, my God. I have the eldest, Alan Karatumba. He's uh, a pilot. Mm -hmm. And I have Dennis in Canada. Mm hmm and uh, he's into construction, building houses and everything, then the twins. And unfortunately, we have uh, a brother who passed away, okay. Colin. Mm -hmm. And there's Ken, who's in agriculture in uh, Uganda, mm -hmm. in Barara, in the village. And then there's Ian and Jay. Jay, Ian, is here in Kampala. And then Jay just got accepted in Harvard University. Oh, wow. Congratulations. So we're very excited Your about family. that. He started like a few months ago. Uh -huh. Yeah, so, you know. So he's the baby of the family. He's the baby Harvard. of the family. Oh. And he's, yeah, he's... he's we're proud of him. It's, it's very exciting. Now, I'm very sorry for your loss. You I lost know. your father. I know. And he was always there for you. He was like your best friend. How are you coping? I swear to God, um, I'll not lie to you. I, I truly believe I'm an autopilot. I have, I'm just an autopilot. I feel like uh, a person moving without an engine. Mm. Yes, things are moving. Yes, I look happy. And everybody's like, oh my God, this chick is on another level. <laughs> but I truly believe that there's pain that is beyond tears. Mm. There's pain that's beyond. It's just beyond. It's like, huh? Mm. I, I honestly, I feel so empty. Mm -hmm. But uh, one thing he taught me, and I know one thing he hated was us to shut down. He was always like, things have to keep moving. Death is not a punishment. It happens. Just keep moving, and that's mm. all I keep hearing in my mind. Keep moving, keep moving. But it's been, it's been, it's the worst thing that's ever happened. You know, it's horrible. Mm. And I, I just pray to God to give me, a, to build, the, to rebuild the engine. Because mm -hmm. I swear to God, you're just seeing me here. I'm here, but I'm really not here. Oh, no. It's something you have to live with. Oh, no. You just have to live with. Okay, well, your dad was a very huge influence in your life. And then I was telling you, yeah, you, know, you always look together, girl. <laughs> huh? Always the hair, the makeup. <laughs> even thinking, well, I need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> but you also <laughs> said that your mom was a beautician. Yeah, my mom is a beautician. She owns AFK Beauty Clinic in Kapalagala. Mm -hmm. uh, but, oh my God, from childhood, she's all about... Now, when I was fat, oh <laughs> my God, my mom was <laughs> losing it. She'd be like, do you know how ugly you look? Do you know how ugly you look? Oh, that's a proper African she, parent right oh there. Oh my God, and she was too tough on me for real. And then the, that was the biggest fight between her and my dad. But I was like, leave the girl. She's baby fight. Baby fight till when? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 just leave the milkshakes, leave the steaks, leave everything. But it was so difficult. Mm. Uh, but she also made sure that I'm always, you know, learning, you know, facials and pedicures and manicures. And she's been on me. <laughs> now it's it's part of me. It's part of you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'm now going to ask you for your first song. Okay. okay? And then uh, we'll get back to that. Maybe you'll give me some tips. Huh? Uh, Shaka Khan, Through oh, the Fire. Yes, mm -hmm. I love this song. <laughs> <I l> <laughs> 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 Big voices. Oh voices. yes. Mm -hmm. Uh some a friend of mine, actually Peter Omega, mm -hmm. said, Angela, your voice, you these are the people you need to these are the people you sound like. These are the voices that you grow from. Shaka Khan was Whitney Houston's biggest idol. She's even she even sang about her in some of her songs. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't focused on Shaka, I was always on Whitney. Okay. And then I listened to this song. He was like, You need to listen to the fire. That is you. And I'm like, 
Okay. That's my favorite song ever. I love it. Okay. So here it is. Through the Fire, Shaka Khan. Now, someone was commenting on our Instagram live video yeah. that you were raised by a diplomat. <laughs> but you're so down to earth. I know. How, how is that possible? <laughs> I get that all the time. People <laughs> expect. What people expect? What? What do they expect? Uh, let me tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. Anyway, in a way, I don't blame them because when my dad had his planes and all his businesses and too rich mm -hmm. and he was just on top of the world and diplomat, mm -hmm. he was spoiling us rotten. Mm -hmm. But there comes my mother. Mm -hmm. My mom is from this, she's a princess in the Buganda Kingdom and also in the Victoria Kingdom. Mm -hmm. My guy is her cousin. She, so she has that Mumbeja thing, mm -hmm. but she also has that down to earth thing. So my mom's sole purpose was to counter mm. my it dad's spoiling these children. Uh -huh. My mom was like, huh, these ones, if I don't put extra effort, <laughs> they are finished. Mm -hmm. So she always made sure simple things like, you've passed the cook. Did you greet him? I'm like, please relax. G did you greet him? You know, go back and greet him. Mm -hmm. He's a person. You, you know, so that she always instilled in us that you know down to earthiness. Mm -hmm. And I always, I always credited her for that. I'm like, if it wasn't for mom, mm -hmm. we would have been rotten. Okay, the fact that you're even aware of that, because sometimes, I mean, you meet people from privileged backgrounds. Mm. Let's say, you know, some people say I'm from a humble background. Some people say, oh, okay, they'll say, yeah, I had a good growing up time right mm. but unfortunately they are kind of little detached from the realities of yeah. what other people are going mm. through so it's nice to, to know that there was an influence in your life oh yeah like big that. one okay so you talked about you know going to university at the age of 15 yeah and you were done with school by 19 yeah uh-huh and that is that when you met your ex-husband that guy that, that's the guy <laughs> in your life Woo so that is the thank you <laughs> that is it so mm -hmm. I was doing like some um, extracurricular activities, mm -hmm. like money making. Yes. So we, when we would stay for holidays, my dad would be like, you know, do something, get a job or something. Mm. But we had, uh, we used to have um, talent shows. Okay. We had talent shows and everybody knew if Angela is in it, it's a wrap. <laughs> Don't even waste your time. <laughs> That's first place. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it, it kind of kept on like that then one day i get a call from uh people a place called punanas mm. one of the like corn on oxford corn market street like one of the hippest it's like the under underground uh, acid jazz kind of place okay. you have whoopi goldberg whoopi goldberg you mm -hmm. have uh, val kilmer those kind of stars will go chill there Ooh, yeah. okay you know those kind of like you know mm -hmm. so i get a call this guy says oh i'm calling from punanas i'm like Bonanas, wow, okay. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, we've been told by the dean that uh, you are an amazing singer, you're winning all the talent shows, and uh, we're looking for a lead singer, so can you? And I'm like, all I was hearing was the dean. I'm like, the dean knows me. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, we're going to give you 300 pounds, 300 pounds per night to perform as a lead singer. But and what? I kept saying, so the dean knows me? <laughs> the dean knows my name? You know, <laughs> these are huge colleges, yeah? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Huge, thousands and thousands of people. You never see the dean, you never see anybody. So the fact that the dean knows me and my number and referred it mm. to me was too much. Okay. So I had like 10 minutes of getting over the fact that the dean knew me. <laughs> 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 the guy's like... Then did we focus on the 300 pounds <laughs> at some point? Like, <laughs> ah, later. Mm -hmm. Finally, I'm like, okay. He's like, well, can you come through and, and you can we start? If, I mean, clearly, we don't even need... um interviews just come start performing mm. so i went through and automatically it was done the guy already hired me on phone uh, because of the, the dean mm -hmm. and then i went and we started uh jazzing we started performing lead singer blah 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 so as i'm there you were 19 then or 18 i was 19 you were 19 yeah. then. okay so as i'm there performing and uh, people just loved oh my god people say i'm we're coming to see the african girl we're coming to see <laughs> angela we're coming you know do you know the, the african girl is the thing because mm -hmm. <laughs> if you're paying no problem you come mm -hmm. so there's this guy, like, very handsome, mm -hmm. six foot four. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what he was then, but he was always, like, there, always in a corner watching. And um, I had this live band. That's You know, I started music. I, I started hitting the ground running. You, live band is usually the hardest. Mm -hmm. Yes. It is the hardest. Most singers... Start in the studio. And they prefer the studio because, uh, yeah, you can play around the, with auto Live, we know. We live hear. is a different animal, my mm -hmm. dear. Mm -hmm. So I started... Hi! 
like on, you know, I started at the top. So I'm performing, I'm performing, you know, learning experience, you know, learning and all that. Then this guy one day comes and he's like, yeah, oh my God, I love your voice. And I'm like, oh, thank you. He's like, so can we have tea? I, I swear to God, I thought he was gay because I thought he was asking the guys behind me. <laughs> <laughs> because remember, at that, at that age, I was this big. I was like 100 kilograms. I was huge. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. In uni, I was a mess. I was huge. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I. So, so like, is he talking, talking to the me? Boys? <laughs> He's like, I'm talking to you, you, the singer. I'm like, okay. He's like, yeah, my name's Alonzo, blah, blah, blah. I, I just love your voice. Can we have, can we have dinner? I'm like, dinner with me. He's like, <laughs> You know what's funny? I, I, he was my first boyfriend. Mm-hmm. I'd never had a boyfriend in life. In mm-hmm. life, all through uni. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even the, all through university, in primary school, oh, I'd baby never. Then anyway. So I was like, ah, what do I even do at this? You know, it was too much for me. Mm-hmm. So we had uh, a date. We had lunch and, and dinner, and then before you know it, we dated for six months. Mm-hmm. And then in six months, he asked me to marry him. Of course, it, for me, the honor was mine. It was mm-hmm. too much for me. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, you were like, please, yes. This man wants me. You know, it was too much for me. Mm-hmm. So that's how I ended up getting married, and then we moved to Chicago. Before you moved and you decided to get married, <laughs> what did mommy and daddy have to say? <laughs> the funny thing is, you know, my dad was always so liberal. Mm-hmm. So when during that period, it's, it's my twin who ratted me out because it was kind of like on the low. <laughs> so my dad had come to visit. Uh-huh. And then we had taken him to the airport. I even have those pictures of when we were at the airport saying bye. Then, then Rujuru was like, yes, but Papa, you're here. But you know what? Angie has something to him. I, I'm looking at him like, Rujuru, I will <laughs> finish you. Eh? I swear to God, I'll kill you. He's like, she's going to kill me, but Papa, Angie has something to tell you. Mm-hmm. And Papa was like, Angie, feel free, tell me. Then, and then I couldn't, I, it couldn't come out because d- he's my first boyfriend. I, had, I didn't know. Mm-hmm. And then Papa was like, he, and then Rujuru was like, she's here, she's dating an African-American. They, they want to get married. And Papa was like, ah, okay, that's a lot of information. <laughs> At the airport, as he's going back to Uganda after, mm-hmm. after a visit, we were at Heathrow Airport. Mm-hmm. And then my dad was like, you know what? I'm not going to say much, but I, I truly believe in being liberal with my kids. If, mm. you, if you restrain them, and then they rebel, and then they do it anyway, so it's okay, I'll support you. Feel free. Mm-hmm. Uh, he met Alonso, because Alonso had come to the airport too. He's like, oh, nice man, no problem, feel free. Mm, okay. And he just said, you know, I, I can't, I can't stop, you know, kids. You're old enough. You, you, you do That's what you want to do. do. Mm-hmm. He was, he was, he just, he was okay, and he funded the whole thing. And he was, That's what happened. So you got married. My mom, of course, was, you know, w- 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 sending all the curses and abusing. <laughs> How dare ya? <laughs> 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 oh no! Mm-hmm. But you know, she was far away, so we're like, okay, we'll handle that later. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> you kind of left everything behind for yeah. Alonzo. Yeah, I actually did. And you moved to Chicago. I moved to Chicago. I left did you know anyone behind. in Chicago? No, nobody. Wow, okay. Absolutely nobody. We were there for six months. So we're there, and I was staying with his dad, and then in six months, because my, my resume was awesome. Like, I had, like, law degree, mm. economics degree, masters. Everybody wanted me. Mm-hmm. So... Th- in six months, I got a job, fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars, and then we moved out. I, I, I became instantly the breadwinner. Okay. We moved out. Mm-hmm. Moved out to a, an apartment, and his dad was like, "That chick is a stallion. She's like, mm-hmm. that's a winner right there." Okay. And so the family I, loved you. Absolutely, they couldn't believe it. How could you come for six months? You're already with a fifty thousand dollar job. You're running the show. You got a, a car and everything, and mm-hmm. a rental car, and, and everything was perfect. Actually, a car from the job. Oh, okay. So we moved out to an apartment. Then I wanted to leave that fifty thousand dollar job to get an eighty thousand dollar job. This is where the crisis started. Hey, that's where the problem. Can you imagine? This guy was getting fifteen, <laughs> and he was his dad's um, secretary. Okay. I was getting fifty, but I just wanted a few months, and I'm like, dude, let's just spend three weeks relying on your fifteen mm-hmm. while I get this eighty k job. I'm okay. looking around eighty a hundred. Okay. He was like, you can't. He was negative. He was like, you can't. Don't you know that? You're black. You're African. You're a woman. Blah, 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 blah. All the negatives. You know? You know these people had with all these... Had you seen that in him at it. any point before? No, I had it. What do you mean? This was like... I had it. I'll not lie to you. One day, one day, my, my dad said that, ah, my, my daughter has married a simple Ascari, and I wanted to kill him for that <laughs> comment. <laughs> can you say such a thing how dare you that's my husband mm-hmm. he said anyway we are praying about him <laughs> <laughs> because at the end of the day he really was because he was in the air force mm-hmm. and he was just a military man okay. and he had left so 
But his reasoning capacity is when I'm beginning to see they are scary. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying? So when I said, I'm just leaving this and I will definitely get this mm -hmm. job. Mm -hmm. So I, he was like, no, you can't, you can't. The white man, the white man, the white man won't let you. You know, my dude, when are we going to get over the white man thing? We are here. It happened. Slavery happened. We need to move. Mm -hmm. And you know, I grew up, I was brought up, my, my dad is a, was a mover. Mm hmm and that's push push what push get see, it done what you see in me now mm -hmm. as much as i'm grieving i'm moving that mm -hmm. was papa mm. so i don't understand this guy who's not moving who always sits home and laments we had bob marley all over the house <laughs> books of of racism and slavery i'm like we get it mm. it happened what but exactly what are we doing now we need to live we need to survive mm -hmm. so he was like don't don't lose the job but i did it anyway i was like what is he talking about Okay. So I quit the job. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, all hell broke loose, Moana. Listen, that was not when the guy dumped me properly. <laughs> Are you serious? Oh my God! I got home. He he like sliced the couch. I was like, what the hell? He sliced the couch. Hmm. Sliced. So like, and I was so naive. I'm like, what happened to the couch? Brand new couch that I bought <laughs> <laughs> in my apartment. Meanwhile, <laughs> he's like, oh, I was skipping. I was skipping, and you know my toes, you know my nails. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was naive. I was very yeah, naive. Because I, I can't I imagine someone lying. Mm. So I'm like, oh, no problem. Okay, you, now you know not to skip in the house. Mm -hmm. And then a few days later, he's like, you know what? I want a divorce. I'm like, but how? We are married in England. This is the certificate. Forever and ever and ever. What are you saying? It was the worst but best experience. It was worse because from there, it was downhill from there. I was 100 kilograms. I lost 38 kilograms in like, in like three weeks. Because mm. all I ate was ice, darling. Ice. Ice. Okay. I had no appetite. And I remember immediately he left. I called my dad. I'm like, okay, Papa, no problem. The manager, I know has left, but you can't send my ticket. I come. Papa is like, no, they don't do things like that. I'm like, eh, that's the first no I heard from my dad. No. I, what do you mean no? Just send the ticket and I come home. Mm -hmm. He was like, no, 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 Aj, you're married now. That's your husband. If things, you know, if things fail, you go and you try to work it out. Mm -hmm. But I was too embarrassed to tell my dad that I had quit the job. I had no money. This man left me with no money. Mm -hmm. Had I told them, that things were that bad. Then he would have stepped They in. would have. Even when I came back, they're like, why didn't you tell us it was that bad? But you know, pride kicks in. Yes, yes. So that's when you can now relate to these, you, these women all over the world who are, go, are being beaten and being harassed and all this. And you're like, why didn't you say something this way? Honestly, mm -hmm. you can't because this guy you put on a pedestal, how does that say? Uh, the guy on the pedestal, you by, defended by the way. to your family. You were like, you exactly. know, leave him alone. He's my choice. He's my Hashtag man. It it's not an Ascari. <gasps> you know, I swear he's not. <laughs> But it's proving to be. <laughs> you know, it was horrible. Mm. So my dad said no. And I'm like, eh, so you mean life can, can you know, Papa was always yes to everything. Mm. I'd be in university. I'd be like, Papa, I need 5,000 pounds today. We need it now. It's on your account. We mm. need this. It's there. It's So I need it. And he says, no, you're not my responsibility anymore. You, you know, you, know, you stay you're there and you work mm -hmm. it. And my dad said, I'll give you advice. Just pray and look for a job. Mm -hmm. That's all I did. I prayed and I looked for a job. Mm -hmm. Three weeks later, I got a, a job, Isaac Hayes. Okay, yeah. Hundred grand, even not even the eighty. I got it. There you, there you go. You know. Mm -hmm. And then I, I, he, they flew me out to Minnesota. I started working and you know making money. And then guess who's back? Mm -hmm. Hello. We're going to get back to this because <laughs> the story is so juicy. <laughs> My goodness, it is so juicy. Everybody's like, uh huh, uh huh. But your next song now, next song now. Um, uh, yeah, multiplied by two. Yes, yes, yes. Multiplied by two. Mm -hmm. Song I did with Radio and Weasel. Yes, yes and yes. I love it. You love it. <laughs> okay, here it is. I we know you are waiting for the rest of the story, but we'll be back. <laughs> Now, you, you mentioned that, you know, like, he slit the sofa. Oh, yeah. Did he do, was there any violence towards yeah, you? Yeah, I love that question, because that's exactly what my dad asked on the phone. He's like, but is he violent? I'm like, no. He kept saying, but is he violent? And I'm like, no, okay. Apart from, okay, he slit the, the sofa and boxing and throwing things around and breaking glasses and breaking tables. Apart from that and breaking everything in the that house. That's not normal behavior. <laughs> That's what he said. He goes, are you mad? That's the height of violence. I, th I said, oh, Baba, I thought violence meant, meant he, if he hits me. Mm -hmm. He goes, no, of course, that's next. Mm, exactly. Because this guy, you'd be talking, and the minute you're like, no, I have an opinion, he grabs the table and throws it. Boof. You're having dinner. Glasses, bush, 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 boxing walls. With blood, and he's bleeding, and you're like, ah, you okay. Is Isn't that serious? You know? <laughs> Okay. So he really was violent. How long were you together? Um, 
together three years, but on paper eight years. Okay. All right. You mentioned that when you got the the big job, you landed your big job, your hundred thousand dollars. Now you always said that someone came back. Yeah, I, I, my dear, and you can't believe before before that. I must mention that I was so depressed that time when I lost a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. I was so depressed to the point that I would wake up and be like, Jesus, really, how can you do this to me? Am I up again? Didn't you kill me last night? <laughs> I'd be oh, walking no. on the streets and I'm like, if you can do me a favor, Jesus. I was always doing shady deals with Jesus. <laughs> like, if you can just, a bus hit me when I'm not looking, let me not feel it. Mm. But just let me die. The pain is too much. Oh. So all those things is what added up to mm -hmm. to the weight loss. So I get a job. Da -da 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 -da, I go. Suddenly I come back. I'm now coming back to Chicago. Big boss, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, no, this was the 80 grand because this was Isaac Hayes' music food passion. Okay. So I come back for the 80 grand. I got the 80 grand job. Mm -hmm. And I'm working at Isaac Hayes. I'm one of the big job, the, the big top managers. And it was a, it, by the, by the, before Isaac Hayes passed away. Mm -hmm. And I'm one of the managers in Ebony Magazine. Actually, the one with Halle Berry on the cover. We are there. We top managers at Isaac Hayes running Chicago. Ladies <laughs> 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 Angela. <laughs> Oh my goodness, my things are also too much. I can't believe it. <laughs> you look back and you're like, huh? you know, I can't believe it. These things happen. Girl, so this guy, knock, knock, knock. I'm like, who is it, Alonso? In tears. He's crying. He's like, I can't believe I was so wrong. He started the whole speech. I'm like, yeah, don't even waste your time. I'm so grateful you're back. Thank you. Come, come in. Please come in, red carpet. Mm. He started like, you know, now cooking. Before, he was always home at 3 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning, every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I remember in my 20s, I was always in bed, 19, 20, crying. Where's my husband? Where's my husband? Crying, crying. She mm. might even aged me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was all I remember of that marriage. Mm -hmm. And then, and then now he comes back. Now he's all changed. He's all determined to be so good. He's now home by 5 p.m. He's coming to my workplace with the flowers. It's like, ah. What's happening? Cooking, bubble baths, roses, presents. But the funny thing is, as much as I gave him the red carpet, and this is how I learned that, you know, the heart wants what it wants. Mm -hmm. The funny thing is, somehow I started rejecting the guy. Mm -hmm. And that was my biggest, biggest, biggest problem. Because I'm like, I love him. I've been praying for him. I wanted him back. Mm -hmm. He's back. Hey, now I... Uh, I couldn't spend a minute with him. I didn't want to be anywhere near him. He was a reminder of the pain. And also there was like a flip know. in, you know, the balance of power I had changed. You know who would have told me that. <laughs> I was like, what is happening? Mm -hmm. So for three months, I battled with this. And then my parents flew to Chicago. Mm -hmm. And my dad was all about, wow, you guys broke up. You're back together. Yes, you made it. That's life. So my dad came all excited. And he had, you know, he, he now he was flying around the world where all his kids are. And mm -hmm. he was giving us um, ten thousand dollars each mm -hmm. to buy a house. Now you don't buy a house with ten thousand dollars, but that pays for the closing costs. Yes, like the down payment. Exactly mm -hmm. for the closing costs. Then you take over the mortgage. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So he was, you know, buying us houses. He was with this ten thousand. So he came. He said, you know, Angela, I have to respect your husband. We sat together. He called Alonzo. We had a meeting, and he was like, and remember, before I was battling, saying, hey, this guy. I love him, but mm. I'm seeing too much of the Ascari. Mm. You know, now suddenly that time apart woke me up. Okay. Those three weeks he gave me that he dumped me. Mm -hmm. Suddenly now when he came back, I'm now seeing what I had never seen. Mm. I think he like removed the blind, the blind shutters. Now they were open. Mm -hmm. You know, they say love is blind. And especially now that he was being nice, you started to realize all the stuff he was doing yeah. before, how wrong it was. I, also. Th I think so. You know, mm -hmm. I think that like, it was in my mind. So finally, my dad is like, yes, Alonso, you know, um, here's $10,000 cash in a brown envelope. I'll never forget it. Mm -hmm. My mom, my dad, me and Alonso sat in the meeting at the house where I was renting. I was back to being the, of course, breadwinner bread in my place. But, you know, I never threw that in his face. Like, I was such a humble girl, you can't believe it. I was just in love, you mm -hmm, know? Mm -hmm. And I always say to him that, you know, what's mine is yours. Let's just enjoy it. Who cares who's making what? Mm -hmm. I was so innocent. Mm -hmm. So my dad is like, um... Yes, so I have $10,000 here. Mm -hmm. Alonzo, I'm giving it to you. Mm -hmm. Take over the mortgage. Mm -hmm. Instead of, you know, hustling with the rent, take over. Mm -hmm. Do you know what this said? <coughs> yo, yo, Mr. Katatumba, thank you so much, you know. But, uh, you know, I, I like to take care of my woman myself. You know, I hate handouts. <laughs> <laughs> 
no, me I'm there sitting like, okay, Wait, finish the me, speech, get the money. The finish the speech, get the money. Wake up, get the money. Uh-huh. And he's like, number one, uh, we don't need a house, you know. But that is like, but you do because right now the burden is on Angela and she's paying the rent, you know. But now at least let Angela be paying towards her house. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, it will help you. No, 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 Mr. Karatuma, no. Nah. <laughs> and he had a huge <laughs> voice, you know. <laughs> hey, Americano. <laughs> so, <laughs> me and my mom are just sitting there seeing stars. We're like, what is happening here? Mm-hmm. And he was like, you know, we're not ready for a mortgage. And my dad is like, but why? Why aren't you ready? He's like, what if the electricity goes out? What if the plumbing goes out? My dad is like, don't you have yellow pages there? You go to the yellow pages, you call the plumber, you call, I mean. Yes. He's like, no, 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 we're not ready. He's like, but why? He's like, Mr. Karatuma, just know we're not ready. You know, so here is your money back. I'm man enough to give it back. Um, I'll take care of your daughter. And, you know, I got this. Uh, <laughs> okay. We all sat there humbly. We said, oh, thanks, no problem, no problem. Papa was like, no problem, no problem. I don't mm-hmm. want to step on your toes. Mm-hmm. He left the house. I said, Papa, bring that money <laughs> quickly. <laughs> bring it here now. I got the 10. I said, let's go find my pl- myself a place. We went immediately. Mm-hmm. Three days. We started hustling with my dad and my mom. We found an amazing condominium for me. Mm-hmm. Paid the closing costs, which were only even 7K. 3K went on the furniture. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, I said, you know what, Papa? I think that's the last straw. I have to leave this man. Mm-hmm. You are right. You are right. You are right. Isn't yes, that scary? Yes, scary. <laughs> 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 because we are like, who does that? Okay. So I, th- that's when I moved out. And then when I came back, when I dropped them off the airport, when they left, I came back home. I found Alonzo crying. And I'm like, Alonzo, what is it? And he's like, um, I feel like you're not feeling me. I, f- I feel, w- what's up? And I'm like, you know, he's like, what, you want space? But he was saying it sarcastically. Because mm-hmm. he remembers the time he left me. I was on the floor crying. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I said, uh, maybe space. Because my dad said, do not leave him. He's so aggressive. He wants you back. And these guys, Something African, happen. he can mm-hmm. do anything. He can even kill you. Because mm-hmm. he's now too aggressive to have you back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So he said, do not break up with him. He must be the one to break up with you. Okay. Mm-hmm. So then he said, so you want space? I'm like, okay, that's, I think that's a good opening. I said, mm-hmm. yeah, space would be good. And he was like, <laughs> you want space from me? Mm-hmm. I'm like, let's try it out. You know, like a few weeks. Cool, baby. I already sent my things the other side. <laughs> <laughs> I left like a few bags. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then he was like, okay. So I'm like, yeah, we could try it like tomorrow for a few weeks. He's like, Haha. okay, let's see. 6 a.m. I was gone. Man, lights off, eh? Gone. So Guy kept calling, calling. I was gone. So that was the end of that chapter in your life. It went on for like, then I came back to Uganda. Then after like five years, he was like, after a few years, he's like, I'm seeing you the internet. You're a star. And yeah, they think, he, they think here, a star here is like Beyonce there. No, no, um. it's a whole different Uganda story. <laughs> here, it's hot air, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> no story here. <laughs> the best is an interview with like Crystal, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Who will allow you airtime to the millions of people listening to sign you, but the rest, hot air. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He was like, okay, we get it. You're Beyonce there. But so what you're saying? And I'm like, God, I'm not coming back. He's like, what are you saying? You're not coming back. I'm your husband. I'm like, my darling, I'm not coming back. So you were still married? Yeah. Wait. Okay, are you still married When I came back, now? I was still married. I, mm-hmm. And then he sent me, well, after I said no, then he sent me, the, uh, this was now eight years, and he sent me the divorce papers because well. we were separated for five years. Mm-hmm. And he was like, it's five years. It's been five years. You need to come back home. I'm like, that is not my home. Mm-hmm. Uganda is my home. Mm-hmm. And he sent me the divorce papers. Mm-hmm which I signed in one day, notarized, and sent right back. Right he was back. like, actually, this is our last communication on, 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 on uh, email. He's like, damn, that was fast. I'm like, not fast enough. <laughs> 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 so after an experience like that, yeah. my goodness. I mean, have you met someone else that you feel like you want to go down that route with? Or I met a number, quite a couple of people. Mm. Yes, I've had dates. Yeah. Okay, okay. Your next song uh, is a Josh Groban song. This, oh this is such a powerful song I for so many people. Song, I know. Tell me about it. It's so powerful for me. Even at my uh, papa's mass, I, I, I sang it for him. I love this song. It's so motivational when I'm happy, when I'm sad. The words alone, you raise me up. Mm-hmm. You know, in good times and bad times, it's very powerful and it's very motivational. So, yeah, I, I dedicate it to the fans today and to you. Oh, <laughs> you raise me up, Josh Groban. Here it is. <laughs> Music, but then you also have a huge heart for charity. I do. I, I, is I, this from your from my dad? From your dad. And my mom, when okay. I was younger, I used to see them. The my dad opened the first free school in uh, Mbara mm-hmm. called Katatumba Free School. Eight hundred kids. Okay. And I would see them hustling with my mom, calling Canada. My mom would be like my 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 uh, 
containers are stuck in Canada and you'll see them stressed. How much money do we send to get the containers here for the kids? And I'm like, why are you stressing yourselves? Mm -hmm. You guys have the money, relax. Mm -hmm. And that's when I got the lecture of my dear. In life, when you have, you must share with others. It must be a blessing to others. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, everything is meaning you. And it, everything is meaningless. You must invest in humanity. Mm -hmm. So it made sense, and I would really see them putting it into action, getting you know the containers coming in, getting books for the kids, and and paying for you know seven hundred, eight hundred kids for free. So that's when I saw it. And mm -hmm. then when I came back to Uganda. Mm -hmm. Uh, I remember I got a call from CPAR and they were like, you know, we've loved your peace song with Butcherman. Can you do something for the Gulu, for the Gulu walk? I'm like, ah, mm -hmm. you guys are stressing me. <laughs> I've come to be a star. I want to be a superstar. You know, I'm chasing Whitney's dreams. We'll be there. <laughs> so that's how it all started at the beginning. Yeah, straight up. I wasn't interested at all. And they're like, please, please. I'm like, mm, nah, nah, sorry. Mm -hmm. Wrong number. Mm -hmm. Like for real, I was on that tip as in, what are you talking about? You know, my dad paid forty dollars an hour for me to have this voice. I've been trained. Let me come and show you what's <laughs> up. <laughs> I want to make money. You're telling me about charity. Forget. Mm. So I said no. Okay. But then I was curious because a friend of mine, Katrina, was like, she was, she took it like she, she took it personal. You know, I can be so real. And she took it personal. I'm like, I got Katrina took it personal. She was German. Mm -hmm. I'm like, ah, Mazungu take things personal about media. But I'm like, ah, gosh, she took it a bit too personal. So I went on the internet and I typed, ah, Guru, Guru. What's up in Gulu? Mm -hmm. What's a big deal? Uh -huh. Well, you didn't even know what I was typing. And oh my God, boy, was I shocked. I saw people's noses being chopped off, ears, what, stories. I'm like, what? I said, Baba, where is Gulu? It's like, here, three hours away. I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. All this is happening three hours away of Kampala, and we're here relaxing. And so I humbled myself the next day. And I went to see Katrina. I'm like, you know what, Katrina? I know I said no yesterday. But I did some research, and you know what? Uh, I want to do this. She okay. was so excited. So I went to um, First Love Studio, and I recorded for Yugulu. Mm -hmm. And I brought it back to her, and she was so amazed. In a minute, you know, with internet and all that, she had sent it around to 40, 71, 72 cities around the world for the Guli Walk, which was happening in five days. And they mm -hmm. were like, yes, so, you know, it's, it's, it's special if you have a Ugandan singing about a Ugandan problem. And there were so many others who were also trying to, 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 to pitch their songs. Mm. But mine related most. Okay. Before you know it, my song was the theme song, mm -hmm. and it just it, that's how that blew up. Exactly. That just blew up. So everyone, seventy-two cities around the world, and they're walking to to my for you Gulu song. And then before you know it, the king of Acholi is like, uh, you know, invited me over mm -hmm. and had ten thousand people at his place. And then I, my dad was like, you can't just go with your head. You have to like, you know, take something if you go to people's houses. Mm -hmm. That's when I started the fundraising drives. Mm -hmm. And oh, that's how it unbelievable. Hmm? Wow. I I I I I, I raised. Over a million dollars worth of, of, actually it's on CNN, mm -hmm. CNN on YouTube. If you type Angela Karatumba CNN, mm -hmm. they came and they were like, "What? What is going on?" Over a million dollars worth of items with cash, yes, and then went to to with trucks and trucks and trucks to Gulu, and then the king had uh, David Ochen and an on David Onen Achana the second. And he had uh, a buffet for me, and people celebrated me. And you know that feeling of people celebrating you? When you know, mm, me, <laughs> if you knew what a clown I am, <laughs> me, you know, it's so humbling. Eh? Mm. It was overwhelming. And then that's when my dad was like, you know, this has been amazing. This is what you need to be doing. Apparently, you are amazing at it. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I was so honest and with so much integrity, I said, this is what I've collected. This is what I'm giving. Mm -hmm. And I'm giving to the king to count to have accountability and to give to who he sees fit. Because that's one of the things you know, people don't have that much confidence in a lot no. of fundra fundraising drives and NGOs right now because you, know, you raise all this and somehow it never really gets to the people who yeah. need it. Yeah. And they are right because there are so many quack people out there who use charity and people's, uh, people's names to get money and they go and you know and uh, sad that a lot of artists are sad doing that, but it's sad because if you say you're going to give money somewhere, you must do exactly that. Mm -hmm. And that's why I've always been involved with the press. I'm like, guys, see what I've received, see what I'm giving, mm -hmm. and that builds integrity, that builds a trust. That's why when I'm ha when I have a drive for like, ah, if Angela is there, you best know that it's going to arrive because I will make sure. And you know, you also have to believe in karma, you know. Ah, people have donated to those people, and then I, 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 I take it. I, I truly mm -hmm. believe in karma. What goes around comes around. I, I, I don't want that bad energy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that has been my biggest secret and my biggest weapon is that openness, integrity, transparency. Mm -hmm. You know, 
Well, unfortunately, we're out of time. We're out of time. Out of time. I know. But thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, honey. You talked about you know some of your values in life: in you know, honesty, integrity, openness. Um, what have you learned? Especially you know the fact that you know you've tried music, but you also have such a solid uh, foothold in business as well. Yeah. I mean, how do we balance this thing called life? What do we do to be the best version of ourselves? The best number one is take it easy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I believe in the Lord. I, I am so God-driven. You know, there are times when things become overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have, you know, in the Bible it says, let me carry your burdens. <clears throat> if you don't have somewhere to put your burdens and somebody carry your burdens, you will lose it. You'll run mad. So you have to learn to have faith, sit back, relax, and say, you know what, he's got it. Let me do what I can and let things move. But most importantly, I do my best. In music, I do my best. In charity, I do my best. The consulate, I do my best. I do my best. Mm -hmm. And then I let the Lord take over. And that's why my, my motto is, do your best and let the Lord do the rest. Mm -hmm.